Hey, everybody. Welcome back to SpaceCast. We're joined today again with Chris Blackerby and Ron Lopez from Astroscale. Thank you for joining us again. We had so much fun yeah. last time talking Thanks. about Astroscale and all the wonderful things you guys are going to be doing in the next few years, uh, bringing down some of the space debris, much much needed service that the world needs. Uh, also with us today is Jim Cooper. Jim has joined us before. Uh, that's Jim over there. And, and Jim promised he was going to speak a little Japanese for us because Astroscale is headquartered out of Japan. So, Jim... Over to me. Thank you, Josh. Let's hear it. So, all right. Here we go. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Great to have you guys on board. Genki desu ka? Uh, Genki desu. Great. <laughs> so, as, we, as, as Josh just uh, said... How did you do? Did you do okay? It's fantastic. fantastic. Like, fantastic. I, 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 I had my eyes closed. <laughs> Onisashi buri desu, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, as Josh was just saying, we're, we're sitting here with AstroScale again. We've, we've got Chris Blackerby, the CEO, COO of, uh, of AstroScale, and Ron Lopez, the president of the U.S. Uh, AstroScale branch that just opened up here just recently, this past summer. Welcome, guys. Thank Glad you. to have you here. And we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, commercial perspectives from, from two of the commercial companies that are doing things in space today uh, about space and space sustainability. So I'll turn it over to you guys for your thoughts on what the commercial companies, what advances are being made by commercial companies today in space and in space sustainability. Uh, so I'd just say that there's so many advances happening. We just I think we're on the cusp of just an, an incredible um, era in space utilization, really. Um, and that's, that's being driven by lower launch costs and lower satellite development costs and just greater and greater utilization of, uh, of Earth orbit. And so I'm talking basically specifically about uh, low Earth orbit and, and, and geo. And so uh, advances that are being made in space on the ground, of course, there's a bunch of stuff happening in deep space exploration and uh, space science as well. Uh, from our perspective, we're focused on that space sustainability primarily of, of LEO and GEO. And so we see these advances happening, uh, providing a lot better capabilities on communication and Earth remote sensing. And where we're hoping to play a role is to make sure that that's sustainable going forward as this huge increase in the number of launches and the number of satellites in orbit uh, continues. We want to be there to make sure that any kind of debris issues are stabilized and the amount of debris is reduced mm -hmm. going forward. So that's where we hope to play a role in this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there, I think there are a lot of naysayers out there that say, well, you know, there was a uh, there was another space bubble in the, uh, in the in the 90s, right, where there was a lot of hype and, and things uh, never quite materialized. But I think the economics are fundamentally different for the reasons that uh, Chris just mentioned, right? So we really are in exciting times when it comes to space. And there's a lot of talk about the trillion dollar economy, the space economy that, that's coming. And uh, in addition to providing a uh, critical service, like Chris just mentioned, I, um, we, I believe that there's going to be a lot of uh, infrastructure uh, that's going to be required to basically enable that uh, trillion dollar economy to materialize. And Astroscale is going to be front and center and part of that. Mm-hmm. That's great to hear. So, so we actually, Josh and I talked uh, during the space traffic management podcast a little bit about what's coming down the pike, as, as you guys were alluding to, uh, because some of these barriers to entry have been dropping from a technological and financial standpoint. Of course, that means a lot more people are getting involved in space. There's a lot more things that are launching. And of course, with all of that comes this new awareness that we really have to worry about preserving the environment that's up there today, right? We want to make, we want to make sure that space is sustainable going forward for everybody as, as all of this is happening to make sure that we've got a, a, the access to that one, trillion, uh, that one trillion economy that we're chasing down. So, yeah, so, so, so given the mission that you guys are doing then, which is obviously very geared towards space sustainability, they're doing active debris removal, end of life disposal assistance. Um, what's your perspective on that from the standpoint of what do you need to accomplish that mission with regards to things like space situational awareness? So it's, it's fundamental. Um, we couldn't do our mission without good SSA capability and, and awareness of what's up there. Uh, we need it to, first of all, understand where the risks are. Uh, so a clear map of what's, what's in space right now, where, where the um, potential uh, collisions might be happening we need that, first of all, to articulate where the issues are um, from a space traffic management, from a debris removal situation. And then operationally, we're going to need all this data, all this information to be able to do this rendezvous and proximity operations on these defunct satellites and, uh, and upper stages, um, used upper stages. We're going to need to have really finite um, SSA capability, really clear SSA capability to understand where things are. So. Um, SSA is going to be essential to everything we do, and it's the first step in creating a really um, forward-looking, uh, sustainable space traffic management environment. Mm -hmm. 
we need to understand what's up there first. Then we can talk about uh, mitigation and reduction of the amount of debris in orbit. And just to put a bit of a fine point on that, it's it's um, that, that that need that Chris is talking about. It's it's not just more sensor data, right? It's it's awareness uh, and actionable information, right? Uh, information that you can actually then use to conduct business operations, which is what we're doing on orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the way you guys are thinking through that. There's obviously a lot of potential there for collaboration between those mission areas. I, I like the idea of that sort of that chain of, of things that happens, the, gaining the awareness uh, to be able to monitor the environment, to understand what the issues are, understand how to keep the sustainability going, understand how to preserve it, and then actually taking the actions through things like active debris removal, end-of-life disposal, and all that to, to do what needs to be done to maintain the sustainability of space. And it's going to take cooperation across companies and across borders to make this happen. It's going to take multilateral cooperation between governments to have an understanding that this is something that needs to be done. And it's going to take cooperation between companies uh, that are doing uh, complementary missions the way that we are, the way that several other companies out there are doing, where we all have to work together. There's no one government, there's no one company that's going to be able to solve these issues. And so it's, it's imperative on all of us to find ways to work together on this. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we set up shop uh, in the U.S., in, in Denver, there's a great ecosystem of a lot of other companies doing uh, very innovative things, big and small. Uh, there's a big talent pool uh, there for us and establishing those uh, partnerships, not just the supply base, but uh, the partnerships, companies that we can work together with is absolutely a uh, critical part of our strategy. So that kind of steps into the area then of space traffic management, which is obviously something that m many countries have started to pick up in terms of thinking about how they want to deal with space traffic management, how to do it. Obviously, uh, here in the U.S., uh, the at least at the executive level uh, through SPD3, the task has been assigned to Department of Commerce. Uh, I know that Japan, for instance, is working through several issues on this as well, and Astroscale uh, is actually helping to advise the Japanese government on policies and implementation for space traffic management. Do you guys have some thoughts on that? Uh, I'd just say um, we are very involved on as all aspects of these policies. So we, as Ron mentioned, our office is in Denver, our main our headquarters for the U.S., but we also have a policy shop in D.C. So we have a small team in D.C. and, and the vice president of our uh, space policy uh, uh, office uh, is based in DC. And so she's leading a, a global understanding of, of what's happening around the world from a policy perspective. So in Tokyo, we're extremely connected to policymakers there. Uh, in the UK, we have connections to European and UK policymakers. So we, we are involved in the conversation across the world and then also in this international fora, uh, UN or World Economic Forum, various groups like that. So we're involved both from an international organizations, domestic uh, legislators, uh, industry groups. So we're trying to be a part of the conversation. We think it's important that industries play a role in these discussions as well. Um, the solution is still uncertain, mm -hmm. but again, it's going to take a lot of conversation to figure out what space traffic management actually means, but um, it's, a, it's a tough problem to solve, but, but it's an essential one. But at least that conversation is happening, it's happening, right? It's happening. That's the important part, right? That it's happening. Uh, the government is, is, is leaning forward and, and studying the problem and uh, trying to figure out the best balance between a permissive regulatory environment and not handcuffing industry to the point where, you, you know, it doesn't grow to, to achieve that, that trillion dollar economy. So. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's reassuring, like Chris said, you know, there have been uh, a lot of uh, panels and conferences focused on this topic this year, and we're, we're happy to, to continue to collaborate and put our, or uh, participate and put our two cents in. Yeah, those are great points. And actually, uh, AGI has been doing a lot of the same work that you guys have been doing yeah. uh, on that front, a lot of, of working with government, with fellow uh, commercial companies and everything like that, trying to, like you said, sort of understand what is meant by space traffic management, what needs to be done to make it successful. And, and I think your point, Ron, is great uh, that that it's being discussed. Mm -hmm. The problem, mm -hmm. I think, at this point has been identified and accepted. You could probably right. go back a decade ago and everybody would still be talking about, well, space is big. And by the way, someone might say it's also black, but that doesn't really scratch <laughs> no, the itch. <laughs> Nobody was we're, talking about it. Right? Exactly. exactly. We're at that point, I think, where the, the communities themselves, both governmentally and commercially, understand that, that this is something that really needs to be worked. Uh, and and so uh, it's great that Astroscale is out there working at AGI, is working with them. I'm glad that we're able to work together and, and, and bat around issues and, and talk through things and kind of see where uh, where there's some potential for collaboration in this. I mean, we're at the cusp. The, the fact that the recognition is there, Jim, as you mentioned, 
this is this is the start. And I think a, a generation from now, uh, it will be just seen as commonplace that there is going to be some kind of space traffic management, um, you know, that's that's been put in place among these cooperating countries. It's going to be looked back and say, ah, oh, this is where this is where it started. And thankfully, they were able to put something in place that maintains sustainability going forward. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's for the long term that we're trying to do all this. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're on a good trajectory. Yep. It's exciting times, and it's a it's a lot of a uh, lot of balls in the air still, so to speak. But it seems like we're uh, thanks to all three of you guys, we are on a good trajectory for this eventually. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like I said, we're proud to we're proud and happy to continue to discuss with you guys and and keep the collaboration going. And and I feel that keep the uh, conversation we're a going. Of, yeah. I think we're a couple of the companies that are out front leading on these issues and and trying to inform policy and and inform implementation. And and we're happy to be working with you guys on this. Charging ahead. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Right. Well, hey, Chris, Ron, <laughs> thanks very much Great. for being with us, Josh. Thanks, Jim. thanks for setting Thank everything up. Thank you. How do you say goodbye in Japanese? Uh, thanks for being here. Sayonara. Yeah. Sayonara. Sayonara is the official way. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> hey guys, right. thanks for listening. Uh, we'll we'll be uh, I'm sure talking more, and hopefully we can have Astro Scale back again at some point and and continue the conversation. They just agreed great. to come every week. That's what I heard. So. <laughs> sure, let's do thanks, it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Look for us at IAC. Uh, we'll we'll both be exhibiting there, and if if this video gets out in time, maybe you guys can see us there. That's a lot of pressure, Jim. Uh, <laughs> IAC 2020. 2020. Yeah, there you go. 2020. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. Take thanks. care. That's it.